This is just going to be a quick video to investigate the sucking power of my homemade vacuum pump. Um, this is the pump right here, just an old refrigerator compressor. I talked about it a little more a few days ago in this previous video right here, so you can click on that if you haven't seen it already. But um, I've got all this other stuff hooked up to it. The vacuum gauge is in the previous video, but here I've got jar of water and this is just an empty jar with another empty container upside down uh, so it's closed on the top and open on the bottom but basically I'm going to evacuate the air from the container and then let the water get sucked in to see how much air is left in it if anything at all um, after I've supposedly completely evacuated it. And let me draw a picture for you. Now I first learned about this, this method of construction from Tesla's um, his lecture, is an 1893 lecture um, titled On Light and Other High Frequency Phenomena. And in his lecture he's got you know a lot of detailed drawings and basically he builds a high frequency, you know, high voltage transformer. And, you know, it's got an iron rod here and a whole bunch of coils and all that. But basically, it's a whole bunch of high voltage stuff. And the whole thing has to be submerged in oil uh, to, so that there's no arcing, there's no corona discharge inside the container and you know everything is very well insulated and preserved but um, a problem with that is that if you just pour oil in it at atmospheric pressure then you know there's going to be little pockets of air in between all the coils of wire and those pockets of air are just going to stay there after you pour the oil in they're not going anywhere so what he did was he first evacuated all the air out of the container first and then once it was completely evacuated he had another reservoir full of oil and then the oil would just get pushed in from the atmospheric pressure would just push all the oil into the container and these these air bubbles wouldn't exist because all the air had been sucked out in the first place and so every space, every void would be completely occupied by oil. And that's what I'm attempting to investigate here to see if this thing is going to work um, with water. Okay, so right now I've got the, the test chamber and the vacuum gauge hooked up to the pump. And I got this clip to close off the, the water. So the water, nothing's going to happen to the water right now when I turn it on. And the gauge should be getting up to about 14. Or if the gauge is correct, it'll be about 1 psi pressure. But um, we'll see if there's any air left over in the glass jar. after I put the water in. Okay, guess that's pretty good. Now while that's still on, I'm going to pinch off the hose that goes to the vacuum gauge and to the pump and I'll turn it off and now I'm going to open up the hose that goes to the water and there it goes it's just filling up the, the jar See the water.
water, I think the water was actually boiling for a little bit there because there was no atmosphere inside the jar. And it looks like it didn't pull a perfect vacuum because there's still a little bit of an air pocket in the top of that plastic uh, cylinder. So I guess the gauge was correct after all. I mean, if it was um, a perfect, or if it was a near perfect vacuum, then it would have gone all the way down to 15 instead of 14. So maybe there's a leak in the system. Maybe the, the vacuum pump is just not effective enough. You can see there's air still left over inside the plastic cylinder and also the jar itself. A little bit of air in there. It's better than nothing. Um, but I don't know. I'll do some, I'll, I'll fool around some more and uh, see if I can make a better vacuum. Thanks for watching.